This is the Flying Bear Ghost V4, and it might surprise you that a printer this clean looking and put together is actually under $400. It might also surprise you that it has some high end features like a lattice glass bed, touchscreen, Wi Fi, filament detection, and power out resume. But the real question is how well does it print? Really well. But before we do that, I gotta say thank you to the 3D Printing Club and 3dpc.tech for arranging this review, as well as Flying Bear for sending this printer over for an unbiased review. And don't forget to subscribe because that does keep me motivated to keep making these videos and you guys get more content. Now back to the review. Now I'm really excited about this printer because I love when the bed is on the Z axis. In my opinion, it's a more stable design than the large weight of the bed moving back and forth in the Y direction, especially as prints get larger and heavier. The Ghost V4 builds on previous versions of this printer, and it includes some pretty high-end upgrades. While they list quite a few in the listing, the ones that stand out the most are the 12mm Z-axis rods and the coated glass bed. The build plate is 255 by 210 by 210 millimeters in the Z-axis, which beats out a lot of other entry-level 3D printers. It has a touchscreen that's really responsive. As I mentioned before, it has the 12 millimeter Z rods, which is better than the standard 8 millimeter rods of old, and it has anti-backlash nuts on the Z as well. Current standard features like filament runout detection and power out resume, which are pretty commonplace now, and they're getting put on almost every 3D printer that's out there. It has a lattice glass bed, as well as an almost full enclosure. Now the printer is enclosed on three sides, so what you would need to do to finish the enclosure is build a front as well as a top. The assembly is really, really easy, and it contains a lot of spare parts. Like, a lot, as in an entire spare hot end. This printer came as a kit. Just know that you need to assemble it, and it may take some time to put together and calibrate if you're not mechanically inclined. Overall, this is one of the easier kits that I've assembled, not including the ones that come in two pieces that just get bolted together and you're ready to go. The base and the XY axes are pre-assembled with the electronics already installed. You'll need to install the vertical supports, Z axes, and top portion with the X and Y axes as well as the rear and side panels. The last thing would be installing the extruder and wiring everything up. The end result is fairly clean and you can tell that Flying Bear thought about cable management for most of the printer. There are a couple areas in which they're dangling cables but overall it's pretty clean and those cables stay out of the way for the most part. It took me about 45 minutes to go from assembly all the way to my first 3D print without any instructions. Yeah, that's another thing. They don't include any instructions in the box. Pretty much they have a pamphlet that directs you to their YouTube channel where there's a video of a guy assembling it and you need to follow that. I pretty much said, huh, and built it myself without any instructions at all. And it went fairly smoothly. You do get all the tools that you need though. If you're not mechanically inclined or you're building it with kids, I'd give yourself a couple of hours just to do the building portion. The build quality of this machine is pretty good. Everything is made of either powder coated or painted folded sheet metal and the side panels are acrylic. The electronics are MKS 8-bit with Pololu style 4988 drivers. So while the quality of the board itself is good, the electronics are a little bit dated. And this results in a few print imperfections. The rods are all straight, bearings are all smooth, pre-installed belts are tight, and the bed heats well. PLA and PETG prints had no issues sticking to the coated glass bed. One quality issue that I did run into was the heatsink cooling fan. Now, I've run into this on a few printers, especially those with 24 volt fans. What happens with these cheap sleep bearing fans is that they start to develop a rattle and they're loud. And when it, it's rattling, it's not pushing as much air as it should, which is kind of important when you're trying to cool the heat sink. Now, there is a fairly inexpensive fix and that involves just replacing the fan. I'd recommend replacing it with one with dual ball bearings as that's going to live a lot longer. Now, if you do end up doing this and you order from somewhere like AliExpress, they're typically going to be around $4. The only thing I'd say is that I've had these fail after, you know, months of using a printer. 
not as soon as I pull it out of the box. Honestly, this thing impressed me quite a bit with the print quality. The first thing I printed was a Maker Coin, followed by an army of Benchies and low poly Eevees. The only issue I ran into here was dialing in the bed temp, as I've never used this ultra base style bed before. It turns out that I needed a temperature of 50 rather than the default 80 degrees Celsius. If I went up in temperature, the corners would lift and prints would possibly fail. Moving on to larger prints like one of my new favorites, Moon City by Yuka Seppinen on My Mini Factory. This here was printed in Area One's glitter purple and came out looking pretty amazing if you ignore the stringing, which is more of a settings thing and didn't really show up on any of the smaller prints. Then on to my favorite torture test, which is the Medieval Castle by Bold Machines. This was printed in white PLA. I love this model because it has the potential to showcase phenomenal detail in a good printer and pretty spectacular failure in printers that aren't dialed in. The details are there and probably better than a lot of the other Bowden style printers that I've used before. One thing to notice is that on the 3D Benchy there was some what's called salmon skinning and that's a direct result of the drivers that they're using. The drivers on the board are replaceable which is really nice and I'm electing to upgrade to some TMC drivers which will one be a lot quieter and two get rid of this issue with the striations. Swapping drivers or going to TL smoothers will cost between five to fifteen dollars per axes that you want to swap them out on. One other thing is that I couldn't find any slicer profiles for this printer. More specifically, I couldn't find any Simplify 3D profiles, and doesn't seem like Flying Bear really provides any. So I had to take one of my existing profiles, which I have for um, one of my other Bowden printers, and modify the size and a few other things for this printer specifically. Aside from the print quality issues of the drivers and the failing cooling fan, the only issue I came across was more of a design flaw. See, the cooling duct for print cooling isn't really that good. One thing I did notice right away was that the opening at the end was really small and it was really far away from the print itself. The result is severely undercooled prints and that's pretty important when you're printing with PLA. ABS not so much and PETG not so much, but PLA really requires active cooling in order to print well. Really all it needs is a bit of a redesign and if I do end up redesigning one you can probably find it in the link in the description below if I end up doing one. And I really do want to do one because other than that and the small issues with the drivers, this printer is pretty good. Honestly, I wasn't too optimistic going into this review. You see, 3D PC had received Flying Bear printers in the past and didn't really have the best experiences with them. In fact, the last time they got a kit from Flying Bear, they couldn't even get it to work. It also looks like the company's made a few strides in recent years. Now, this being the fourth version of this printer that they've released, I wouldn't expect anything less really. The print quality I'd consider to be good, and it could possibly even be great with a few of the modifications that I've mentioned. Even then, there were a few issues. But all the ones I've mentioned, like the fan and the fan duct, well, they're not really deal breakers, and even the drivers can be replaced. I'm honestly thinking of making this one of my go-to printers moving forward, and that's for a few reasons. First off is that it's pretty fast, and it probably, it's probably about as fast as my Formbot Raptor, if not a little bit faster, if you consider that the Raptor has a longer startup time due to the automatic leveling. Another thing is the consistency of this machine. I had absolutely no issues from print to print, and I didn't have to re-level the bed at all. Well, that's it for this review. All of the prints that you see in this video, I'll link in the description below, so if you want to print them out for yourself, you have the opportunity to. I'm Nathan with 3D Guys. Keep printing.